Hello everyone and welcome to Control Engineering Tutorials. This tutorial is dedicated to the controllable canonical form. Briefly speaking, let us say that we have a transfer function given over here. And over here, for illustration purposes, I consider a third order system. The goal is to transform this transfer function into a state space model. The state space model structure is given over here. And this particular form of the state space model is called the controllable canonical form. The controllable canonical form is very useful and it's used as a basis of a number of control engineering methods and algorithms. For example, if you have a state space model in the controllable canonical form, it's very easy to assign poles of a closed loop system by using a simple feedback. And with little or no computation, we can define and we can find the feedback control matrix K that stabilizes such a system. Furthermore, if the controllable canonical form exists, then we know that the system is actually controllable. In this video, I will explain you the main idea of the controllable canonical form. I will explain you how to construct the state space model. And at the end of this video, I will explain you how to derive this block diagram of the controllable canonical form. But before I start with the explanations, I would like to mention a few things. First of all, those of you who are my subscribers or who follow my work know by now that I always create a post that nicely summarizes everything that I will explain in this video. And consequently, here is the post. This post contains all the derivations, equations, and even block diagrams at the end. Secondly, it took me a significant amount of time, energy, and planning to create this video and this post. And consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's start. We explained the main idea of the controllable canonical form by considering a third order system shown over here. However, everything explained in this video can easily be generalized to systems of arbitrary order. So let us consider this transfer function over here. We see that the polynomial in the denominator is of the third order and the polynomial in the numerator is of the second order. Our goal is to write a state space model corresponding to this transfer function. To develop a state space model, we introduce an additional variable called P of S. Capital P of S is the Laplace transform of the signal in the time domain lowercase p of t. And p of t is usually called the partial state. Consider this transfer function. By introducing p of s in the denominator, denominator and the numerator of this expression over here, we can decompose ws as a product of two transfer functions. wpy is equal to the expression, or better to say, to the polynomial in the numerator of w of s, and wup is equal to 1 over the polynomial in the denominator of w of s. First, we focus on the transfer function WUP. The subsystem corresponding to this transfer function is given over here. And from the equation 3, we can obtain the equation number 4. The equation number 4 represents a subsystem in the complex domain. The equation number four is equivalent to the system description in the time domain given by the equation number five. To obtain the equation number five from the equation number four, we simply use the fact that 
s to the power 3 multiplying p of s is equal in the time domain to third derivative of b with respect to time. Similarly, s squared p of s is equivalent in the time domain to second derivative of p. And s p of s is in the time domain p dot of t. From the equation number 5, we can express the third derivative of p, and we can obtain the equation number 6. Let us now focus the transfer function wpy. This transfer function corresponds to this subsystem, and by using the similar procedure, we can transform this system in the time domain, and as the result, we obtain the equation number 8. And here is the main idea of the controllable canonical form. We introduce the state space variables, and these state space variables are given by the equation number 9. So we say that x1, a new state space variable, is equal to the second derivative of p. x2 is equal to first derivative of p, and x3 is equal to p. By substituting, these state space variables in the equation number 6, we obtain the first state equation of the canonical controllable form. And the equation is given by the equation number 10. Similarly, we can use the state space variable assignments from the equation number one, 9 and substitute these expressions in the equation number 8 to define the equation number 11 that represents the output equation of the controllable canonical form. So to summarize, by using the state space variable assignment given by the equation 9, we were able to define the first state equation of the controllable canonical form and the output equation of the controllable canonical form. And we are done. Basically, this assignment enables us to write the state space model. And the state space model is given by the equation number 12. The equation number 12, or better to say, the state space model given by the equation number 12 is the controllable canonical form. This form is also called the upper companion form, or in literature you will also see that this form is called reachable form, or it's also called control canonical form. Next, we show that the state space model in the controllable canonical form is actually controllable. So how to show that? First, we need to construct the controllability matrix. And here is the controllability matrix we have the first block is b, the second block is ab, the third block is a square b. And the system is controllable if and only if the rank of this matrix is equal to 3. So let us construct this matrix. Let's multiply a, b, a square times b, etc. Let's see how to do that. Here is the result. And finally, we obtain our controllability matrix given over here. Since this is an upper triangular matrix, its determinant is equal to the product of terms on the main diagonal, and we can see that the determinant is equal to 1. Consequently, the system is controllable. And you can see that the parameters a1, a2 don't appear on the main diagonal, so if we can write the controllable canonical form, then the system is always controllable. And that's a very useful property since it enables us to assign poles of the closed loop system wherever we want. And finally, I will explain you how to create a block diagram of the controllable canonical form. Let's see how to do that. 
Let us focus on our equation number six that's shown over here for brevity and for ease of understanding. I will introduce variables h1, h2, and h3. So how to construct a block diagram of this equation? Well, this is very easy. The block diagram is straightforward and it's given over here. This equation tells us that the third derivative of p is a sum of minus h3, minus h2, and minus h1, and of course u. And here are the blocks, here is my summation, here is the third derivative of p, this is the output of this block, here is h1, h2, h3, and u. The next step is to form the signals h1, h2, and h3. Let us first see how to form the signal h3. Over here, we can see that h3 is equal to a1 times the second derivative of p. However, over here we have the third derivative of p. So what do we need to do? To obtain the second derivative of p, we need to add an integrator. And once we have an integrator from this part over here, we see that we need to have a feedback signal and we need to multiply p second derivative times the gain a1 and in that way we obtain h3. In the similar manner we can obtain h2, h1 and u is given over here. So to form for example h2 we again need to add an integrator because we see over here that we need to have p dot and over here we have p2 dots then over here we will have p dot then we see over here when that we need a gain and the gain should be a2 by having that gain and by multiplying p dot by that gain we actually obtain the signal h2 and in the similar manner can obtain the signal h1. By using this principle we obtain this block diagram that corresponds to the transfer function w u p. However we need another sub block or subsystem corresponding to the transfer function w p y. So let's see how to construct that transfer function or that subsystem we need to focus on the output equation and the output equation is repeated here and it's equal to the equation number 20. By analyzing this output equation we simply observe that we just need to take the second derivative, first derivative and the variable p and we need to multiply these variables by b1, b2 and b3 and here is the result. So this part over here is this part over here. Similarly the part over here is given over here and the part over here is given over here. And that's it. That's our block diagram. That is this block diagram is a complete block diagram of the controllable canonical form. It's not so difficult to construct this block diagram once you know what you're doing and once you know the basic principles. Okay, that would be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I create, please press the like and subscribe buttons or try to support my channel. Thank you very much and have a nice day.